Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. We're going to pick up today, starting down in verse number 8. And the Bible says, If thou seest the oppression of the poor, and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter. For he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Moreover, the prophet of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver should not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there of the owners to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of the laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Now, about the cover. The thing about Ecclesiastes, same thing with Proverbs. Sometimes, I mean, if you've got the paragraph notations in your Bible, verse number 8 is its own paragraph. Verse number 9, also a brand new paragraph. I say, I don't know about y'all, but I hated English class, but I do know that a paragraph is in and of itself one thought. Okay, sometimes in Proverbs, in a verse, you'll have two or three thoughts in one verse. Right, so you have to be very careful to read in context. And there are a couple of different topics in what we just read, but Lord linked them all together. And we're just, as we normally do, go verse by verse. Verse number 8, If thou seest the oppression of the poor. Now, what's that word oppression mean? If this were my teens class, we'd be playing the dictionary game right now, and some of y'all's eyes would get this big because I'd be waiting on y'all to tell me what oppression means. Right, but oppression is not ridicule right oppression is not persecution ridicule you make fun of somebody you belittle them okay persecution you're trying to kill somebody you're trying to squash something out you're bringing force in order to stop something oppression is when you're trying to keep somebody under your heel so to speak you're trying to keep them from progressing okay and is anywhere in the notes, but the Lord just brought it to my mind. I do not know how any person of an ethnic minority or someone that the world would call a marginalized group can vote for the Democrats. For 50 years, they've been saying, we'll help you, and all they've done is keep them under their heel. For 50 years, instead of, they may not be poor financially, but the poor in spirit, the poor, you know, Maybe in society, they're looked down upon, right? Are we not the country that said, you know, we the people believe that it is God's inalienable rights unto man that we have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? I, I don't see where that applies to if you live in this area or if you live in that area or if you were raised with these conveniences or these privileges, right? But yet some will oppress the poor to keep them poor because as long as somebody's poor they can keep coming back to you and you essentially have somebody that will do your bidding for very little of your effort right well verse number eight says if thou seest the oppression of the poor right i mean our church very good to those that and most of y'all may not even know because the pastor does it in such a way he don't want to embarrass anybody but if there's somebody in the church that has a need, we don't oppress them. In fact, we bear one another's burdens. Right? We lift those people up in prayer, but every now and then he'll announce a pounding, and he says, we're not going to tell you who it's for, but if God lays it on your heart to bring in some canned food, if God lays it on your heart to bring in some essentials for around the house. Right? At one point, I don't know if any of us would have been able to buy toilet paper, but now it's still on the shelves. Right? But... What's that? We don't want to see the poor kept in that state. Because you know what poor really means? Desperate. Somebody that's desperate is liable to do anything. In fact, there's a term in law, a crime of necessity. That's when a father who's ball I've seen you know, security camera footage of gas stations where a guy goes in and he's bawling his eyes out and saying, Sir, I don't want to do this, but I have to rob you because my kids need to eat tonight. And he says, if I ever get back on my feet, I promise you, I'll give it back and then some. 
And the guy said, just tell me how much you need and I'll give it to you. He says, I, I really don't know how much it's going to... And then the guy's heartbroken that he has to do it. But that man was desperate. Spiritually, there's a lot of people that are poor. And, you know, was, John was instructed to write by Jesus to the church at Laodicea. They didn't realize that they were poor and needy and that they were naked. They thought they had need of nothing. But because they were poor in spirit... They didn't cling to Christ. What did they do? They were oppressed by maybe the flesh, maybe by the world, maybe by other people in the church. Right? Anybody ever been there before? But as a result of that, they clung to something other than God because they were desperate. Not desperate for God, but because people kept them down long enough, they became dependent on those that were oppressing them. When you start giving in to the flesh so that it'll ease up on you, the flesh is only going to grab a hold tighter. If you start appeasing the world, because the world says, well, if you just do this, if you ease up on this, everything will be fine. Until the next time they want you to ease up, and ease up, and ease up. And they will, they may use ridicule, they may use persecution, but their overall goal is to keep you under their thumb. Know why? Because you can't control God, predict God, Everything about God is that we must submit to Him. People don't like that. Flesh don't like that. Worldly agendas don't like that. In fact, God said, Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, that if you give to the poor, that you're giving unto God, that God owes you if you take care of the poor. So if we, doing all things as unto Christ, if we give out blessings to those that we don't want to see kept poor, oppressed, and if we do lift others up, not for our sake, but so that they'll give God the glory for it, see that God won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. That's Bible. Everything about God is that we get people independent from the world, from sin, and from the flesh that they become independent in the new man that Christ makes them into. Right? You didn't think that we could get that much out of that first part of that verse, but that's what God gave me. Right? But when, or if, thou seest the oppression of the poor, and violent perverting of judgment. Violent perverting of judgment. Now violent obviously means it's It's messy. It's not an easy thing. Somebody's forcing it upon you. Perversion. That's when somebody takes something that you know is true, maybe that they even claimed to used to be true, and they rapidly change it, shove it down your throat. But what's judgment? That's what's, white, what's right and what's wrong. That's what's white and what's black. Do this, don't do that. At one point, America do what it was to do good and knew what it was to do evil and they said well if you don't do good you're guilty of doing something evil that's Bible man that knows to do good doeth it not to him and his sin America used to look down on those things but it wasn't violent it was an easing away from standards that got to the place when, now where there's contradictions in the law that a woman can abort a baby but a man if he were to you know, and domestic violence, push a woman, not condoning it, it's wrong, you don't know what I think should happen to those people, okay? But if she were pregnant and she lost the baby, he'd be charged with fetal homicide. How do contradictions like that happen? Well, that happened in America slowly. But now what we see is violent perversion of justice. You've got the news every day, which is why I can't watch it every day, but every day, I get updates on my phone. Peaceful protest, peaceful protest. Well, I read a report this morning that one of the guys protesting that they arrested had a Molotov cocktail and a loaded handgun. Doesn't sound very peaceful to me. Right? It wasn't there for everybody to see. Like, you know, I stayed in support of the police. To get to them, you got to go through me. That'd be a little different. I wouldn't have gone about it that way. But, you know, then and there, well, he was making a statement. But he concealed it. Why? He knew it was wrong, but he was trying to pervert the judgment. 
take it into his own hands. Then you've got those that will use a cause and pervert it to just do whatever they want to do. I'm not just talking about riots all around the country. Anybody remember why the riots started? They'll say that it was George Floyd, but long before George Floyd, they were ready to riot. That was just the cause that they attached it to. People angry. Probably most of them angry because they've been cooped up for about six months now, and they're going nuts. Right? I mean, ask Christian, most of the calls that he got, I, I still don't know, I haven't asked, but when he was riding around in training, most of the calls he got, domestic violence calls. Because everybody got a whole bunch of money that they're getting, they can't go nowhere, and the booze stores are still open. So they went down there, they bought some, they get drunk all day, and then they get in fights with one another. They got more money than they were making when they were working, and they don't know what to do with it. And then if you were blessed that your job didn't furlough you or you know, forcibly have to lay you off because maybe the boss got laid off too. If you're one of those people that's still working, you're making less money than the people sitting at home. I mean, I understand taking care of people. But I mean, even unemployment don't pay you at 100% of what you were making. And that's an insurance that you buy into. That's a privilege that you recoup. Because whether you realize it or not, all them taxes that you pay on each paycheck, that's one of them. But yeah, now we're just giving it all. Why? There's a reason somewhere. Follow the money. Right? What's the whole point? At this point, I don't know. But, well, I got a few ideas, but I won't be uh, going deep down the rabbit hole with y'all today. Whole point of it is what are they getting people to do? Violently pervert their judgment. Y'all remember when everybody was crying? Trump needs to release his taxes. Trump needs to release his tax. And then during one of the presidential debates, he said, I'll release my tax returns against my attorney's recommendation as soon as Hillary shows us those 30,000 emails that she's still hiding. Where'd that double standard happen? On the job, when was it that just because you say a word, right, that a word automatically means intent, and then you lose your job? Right? You want to know what one of those words is nowadays? Queer. That turned into a hate term. That means that you're weird. And there's a lot of people out there that are queer. Right? There's a whole lot more out there that are fags, but there's a whole lot of them that are queers. Right? And I'm not talking about English cigarettes either. But where did all this, someone violently perverted? Y'all didn't know it's happening behind the scenes in colleges for about, oh, 30, 40 years now. Humanism snuck in, and then all of a sudden, all the people in authority that were taught this, that were raised this, they're trying to force it down your throat. What's the Bible say to do when you see that? Marvel not. There's violent perversion of judgment and justice in a province. I think I heard since uh, 2016, the state of New York has had 72 politicians arrested on fraud or illegal activity while they were in office. You know how many of them did jail time? Two. I thought right was right and wrong was wrong. But I thought that if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Now, I thought that if you ran on a platform and you didn't do it, you didn't get in again. That's what we were always told. So when did it change? When were things around the house of God not allowed, but now all of a sudden they are allowed? How come used to you wouldn't say certain things in church, but now you got no problem saying them? Why is it that used to you had standards throughout the week on when you'd sit down and study the Word of God? When did that all of a sudden change? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what changed? Man. Was it easier to do when society thought it was acceptable? No. So what changed? That's what we're going to... Eventually we'll get there. But then, marvel not, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth. No. 
Another example, since we've already been talking about it. Okay, mayor of Portland didn't do nothing. Right, in fact, she's saying, another good one. The New York City mayor allowed all these protests to go on, protests, until it came to her front door. Then she outlawed that they can't protest at her front door. Yeah, that's good. Right, but Portland, burning things down. Seattle taking over part of the town. Police moved out of a precinct. Mayor didn't do nothing. Police chief wanted to do something. Mayor wouldn't let him. Governor didn't do nothing. So now, Trump first said, well, I'll send in the National Guard. Why? Because there's always somebody higher up the pecking chain. Now he's saying he's going to use the county sheriffs. Because there's nothing that they can do to stop them. Sheriffs are a part of each state's constitution. And they have the right to enforce the law without anybody's approval. That's why, thanks be to God, our sheriff said he wasn't going to be arresting people that were going to church. That he wasn't going to be arresting people driving around in cars that weren't wearing masks because that wasn't his job. His job was to stop crime. Right? Well, on the flip side, you know, it says that there, for he that is higher than the highest regarded. Well, in Kentucky, the highest is the governor, and ours is deadbeat. And half brain dead. Right? But, there's somebody higher than the governor. That'd be the president. Really, there's somebody higher than the governor, and he don't really like it. It's called the courts. I'm still waiting to see how all that shakes out. I got a feeling that they're going to drag it out until after all this is over, and we're never going to get a verdict. But, mm, what would that be? Perversion of judgment and justice? But even if President Trump doesn't do all that he says that he's going to do, there's one, last part of the verse, and there be higher than they. Back when Solomon wrote this, he had the equivalent of city mayors, provincial mayors, right? He had princes in the kingdom that had territories. And then there was one that's higher than even the princes. Who was that? Solomon. But he's saying, even if I lose my mind, which in his old age he did, he bowed down and worshipped false gods. He said, even if I lose my mind, there's one that's higher than even the highest. It's thrones in the sides of the north. You know what Solomon's saying? Take comfort in the fact that, as the Apostle Paul would later write, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. There's one that can take what was meant for our harm, as Joseph said to his brethren. You meant it for my harm, but God meant it for my good. Right? We see it, marvel not. You know why it happens? Sin. You know why it happens? Man's selfishness, which was the reason that man sinned. And if you think that the world got so bad in you know, such a short amount of time that God from Adam to Noah destroyed every man on the earth except for Noah and his family, marvel not at the fact that it's going to get worse again. Marvel not that there are people that are chasing after. There are people that are pursuing after. There are people that just don't want to do anything. Won't be left alone. And they'll do whatever it takes to stay right where they are. Or to advance whatever they want. And I know we're using big nationwide ideas. And we're talking individually. I mean, I don't really remember all that well. Because I was usually in the car waiting. A Christian used to hate going to school so much, he'd lock himself in the bathroom and say he wasn't going. <laughs> he was little. But can you imagine trying to wrestle the kid named Mad Dog out of bed in the morning? Yeah, that's my grandpa nickname because he used to bite people. And he'd go into the bathroom and he'd get so anxious about school that he'd, you know, he'd get sick. He hated school that much. I don't blame him. I hated it too. But I surrendered to my fate. You know, I got in the car every day. And then had to listen to either Shania Twain or Celine Dion, which was, you know, seemed like the only two CDs mom would play in the car. <laughs> to this day, I know way too many Shania Twain songs and Celine Dion songs. But somebody don't want to do it, they're going to try everything that they can. You may have to take them kicking and screaming all the way there. Right? 
Well, Christians, how many times do we have to have a meeting that God's ready to pour it out? What's keeping us from getting there? Are we violently perverting standards in our life to stay where we're at? Are we perverting the justice and the judgment of God so that we can reconcile where we are and where God wants us to be and convince ourselves that that's where we are? Marvel not. It's what man does. Eve looked at the fruit and said, yeah, it looks like it's good to eat. Adam saw that she had already taken it. Reconciled and said, I can still be right with God and choose her, even though she disobeyed God. You know what both of them found out? Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work. Why? Because we have perverted that which God has commanded. You do understand that the judgment and justice back in that day was the law that God delivered to Moses? He's saying that marvel not if in a province. That means it's part of God's people. But in saying a foreign land, he's saying in one of the provinces. That's Israel. Marvel not if they pervert God's word. It's literally what he meant. Christians week in and week out go out remembering certain parts of the book and they conveniently forget that which God wants to do business with them on. I still got problems with this one. Love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That's with everything, every day. And in, in other accounts, he says, with all your strength. Right? There are times that I catch myself giving more energy, more time, more effort to something other than God. Yep, guilty. Some people forget that passage. They love, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Yeah, if you're so close to God that goodness and mercy are going to have to come after you. That's what David said. I'm, God's my shepherd. I'm going to follow after him so close that there ain't going to be anything in between me and God. And he's God, so I know goodness and mercy are around him, but I'm going to be so close to him that they're going to be behind me. People forget that. They forget that the shepherd may lead you through the valley of the shadow of death, that you may be encircled by the enemy, but there's a table that he'll prepare for you in the midst of them to eat at. They forget all that. They want the blessings without any of the responsibility. But let's keep going before y'all faint. Verse number 9, Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. What's that mean? God gave the earth all the riches in it so that every man could profit from it. Why did God give His Son so that all could receive forgiveness of sin? Why did God give you the Word of God? Why did God bless that throughout the centuries it got to the point that it was printed in the common language time and time again? It was written in the common language and it was printed in the common language and the 1611 was the first one in the country of England and many other parts of the world where they spoke English that it was the language that people understood even in France they spoke English because it was the trading tongue Britain had a whole bunch of ships those ships went all over the world they had to understand English to trade with the English and you know what all of them that spoke English could get a copy of the book so that they could see what God said you know what they had before that Latin the one that only the privileged got to read knew how to speak, is dead long before people stopped speaking it. The only people trying to keep it alive were the Catholics. Right, but so you could see, the Word of God is for the profit of all. It says even the king is served by the field. King wouldn't eat if there weren't people out there farming. Right, president wouldn't have much to do if everybody stopped doing Military wouldn't have anything to protect if people just let everything go to hell in a handbasket. Right? What's this point in going to work? Right? If you know you're going to spend it all before you get back home. What's the point in laboring if there's no reaping? 
Yeah, the king didn't go out and labor, but as a reward for doing as God said, leading God's people the way that God instructed, the king would have been taken care of just as well as the people out there taking it fresh from the field. Why? Because in God's plan, nobody lacking. You might say, well, I'd want that job. Well, hang on a minute. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. If you're doing it for the perks, there will never be enough perks to satisfy you. But then it goes on to say, nor will he that love abundance with increase. Right? If you always love having the new iPhone, as soon as they put out the ad for the next one, you're not satisfied with the one that's in your hand. You can't even go get the one that you saw the poster for yet, but you already don't like the one that you have. There are people that always want to be on the cutting edge. There are people that are always playing keeping up with the Joneses. They get bucked, I got to have a bigger boat. They get an RV, I need an RV. I hate camping. I don't want an RV. I've never been camping because I know I'd hate it. God invented air conditioning for a reason. He gave mankind the knowledge to do things like DoorDash, where now I don't even have to leave the house and food comes to me. Hey, I had things to do yesterday. And then the phone gives me a little alert. Oh, well, I can't even remember the guy's name. It was a foreign name. I, I was going to ask him how to say it. But he just came, it says, hey, he's coming with the food. Next thing you know, here he comes driving. Champ's barking at him. I know the food's here. Right, well, what's the point that I'm trying to make here? Convenience, abundance, is not the goal. If all you're doing is sitting there and counting the blessings that God's given you so that you can say, this is how much God's blessed me, you're never going to be satisfied with the blessings that God gave you. Right? If all that you're looking for is what your kids are doing so that you can be proud in their accomplishments, you'll never appreciate them as a gift that God gave you. You're not enjoying the blessing that God gave you. You're trying to show how the blessing that God gave you is better than the blessing that God gave somebody else. If you try to sell a piece of land and make it seem like you gave God all of it because you wanted the appraise and the awe of men that they would sell that land and give it all to God, no, they didn't. And they both died because they lied to God over it. If in your heart, all right, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to, okay, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Second thought, I'm headed that way. I was okay preaching your word, Lord, being a prophet where I'm at. But I ain't going there. Well, did he really consider it a privilege to be a prophet, the very mouthpiece of God, to God's people? No, because if he counted it a blessing, he'd have gone and told anybody. I won't give you a plug nickel for somebody that says, well, I won't go preach over there. If God opens the door and the pastor okays it, I'd go, well, they don't believe the same way. Well, I doubt they're going to believe me, but I'm going to try and straighten them out. I'm going to preach whatever God lays on my heart to preach. Because right? it is a blessing. It's a privilege. It's not a right. But when I wake up every morning, those that say, well, it's another day, but this is the day that the Lord has made. There's a reason God let me wake up today. Lord, what's your purpose for me today? Help me, guide me, pray without ceasing so that I don't miss the direction of God throughout the day. And then there's those saying, well, I've got to go work today so that I can have more in the bank than somebody else. Or I've got to go work so that I can take another trip, but they're never satisfied in the trip because they always want to take another one after that. Right? Those that desire will never be filled if that desires anything outside God. We sang about it in the congregational. That there's a fountain within us. Why? Because Jesus told that woman that if any man drink of the water that I give him, it should be a fountain bubbling up inside him, springing forth unto new life. God didn't just say, I'll fill the cup, I'll have it bubbling over. Right? Anybody see a well that when you go to get water out of it, it turns into Old Faithful? I ain't seen it, but I feel one right down in here. 
And I don't have to wait the 17 minutes or however long it is that they've got it clocked down to at Old Faithful in Yellowstone that, hey, it'll go off again. Well, that means it's stopped. Mine don't stop as long as I'm in communion with God. Well, what silver? That's, for all intents and purposes, lack of faith. They want money so that they know that their future is secure. Well, money doesn't secure you. Right? God knows my upsetting, or my uprising and my downsitting. God knows which way I'm going to take long before I take it. And even though sometimes He knows I'm going to make the wrong decision, He still out of love warns me ahead of time and then reconciles me afterwards. Right? God's got it all planned out. I mean, He's already seen it. John's already seen you in heaven if you're saved. Right? Don't tell me that God doesn't know what's going to happen. But some people aren't satisfied with what God knows will happen. They still want to try and get their outcome. But what's silver? Well, if I've got money in the bank, I may not have to pray as much. If I've got money in the bank, I may be able to take a little bit more time off work, go get to do the things that I want to do. Well, what if God gave you that job so that you'd win people to Christ at that job? You really think God's going to let you get away from the thing that God purposed for you to do in your life? Ask Jonah. Ask Jeremiah when he's in prison, tried to give up. Ask Elijah when he gets down under the juniper tree and says, Lord, what's the point? You know what all three had in common? They went back to doing what God wanted them to do because they became satisfied not in what God gave them, but in the fact that God gave them something to do. Those that love abundance are never satisfied when the shed's full. In fact, the Bible gives us the example of the man that said, are we going to tear down this barn and make a, make a bigger barn because God's blessed us so good we need more room. Little did he know the grain that was in there wasn't going to keep. The grain that he was so you know, overcome with joy in seeing, he didn't stop and say, thank you, Lord, for blessing me with all this, and then take some of it and go plant, pray over it and say, God, I pray that you bless this. He didn't take some of it and go give it to those that were incapable. Because right? back in the day, if you was blind, there's very little you could do. There wasn't Braille. There weren't programs that would help children that were blind. Right? If you were deaf, there weren't programs to help you. You became a beggar. You relied on the goodness of others because they wanted to do good as God said. You don't see him taking all that grain that he had extra and giving it to those that had need. No, he said, all right, let's build it bigger. Why didn't it last? Because his life was required that night. He never got to see the shingles come off of the barn so that he could build another one. When all you want is more, more ain't enough. When all you want is bigger, no matter how big, it's never better than what God wanted you to have. Why do you think godliness with contentment is a great gain? Because if you're, it didn't say that godliness with very little. Contentment. Saying, Lord, thank you for blessing me with what I got. And I know that the Bible says tomorrow, daily, you load us, load us with benefits. But Lord, these blessings, like that woman with those pieces of silver right if I were to get in a position where I lost one of those benefits that benefit means so much to me I'll tear the house up and in the middle of the night throw a party when I find it again invite all the neighbors wake them up and say the blessings of God mean so much to me that now that I got them all back I'm never going to let them disappear again so why have people gotten to the place where verse number 8 becomes true? Because their focus, their desire, the thing that they crave, their desperation shifted from God to something else. They weren't satisfied with the presence of God. They weren't satisfied with the moving of God. They weren't satisfied with the purpose of God in their life. They weren't satisfied with the direction of God. In fact, verse number 11 when goods increase, 
they are increased that eat them and what good is there to the owners thereof saving the beholding of them with their eyes all you can do with the blessings that God gives you is partake of them and if you're full all you can do is stare at it but what good is something that you can look at I don't get art it's dumb well it brings emotion yeah so does riding a roller coaster but that's actually something fun to do right? well it is very rare so is Jesus he's the only begotten right or well you don't know who did it well I know the one that flung the stars out in the sky that, that's a whole lot more you know beautiful than anything that Jackson Pollock ever did right? Brandon will get that joke he's an artist a whole lot better than anything that Picasso did a whole lot more than all those people that broke the commandments that we ought not make any image anything in the earth above the earth, under the earth yet some people still got pictures hanging up of something that supposedly Jesus in their house you're daring God not to put blessings on you but it's just to remind me of what they never saw him John saw him and did his best to describe him and it put the fear of God into him. That wasn't something pleasant. When he spoke, people fell and hit the ground when they came to arrest him. You're telling me that they captured that in a painting? Hogwash. But you know what did capture it? His word. Because he was the word made flesh. But when people ease the, pervert the judgments what becomes the outcome I can do whatever I want we heard about Wednesday night from our pastor and he said I mean he even said on Sunday too my right to my claim to myself the essence of sin I will serve God when convenient then you're not serving God I'll serve God when it's easy then you're not serving God they that live godly shall suffer persecution Right? To walk hand in hand with Jesus is to bear the cross that He also bore. But He said, take my yoke upon you because He's pulling the load with us. Right? But those that just want to see increase, sometimes it's thin. Jesus didn't even have a pillow to lay His head on. He used rocks. Anybody use a rock last night for your pillow? You're doing better than Jesus did while He was here. Anybody ever pray so hard that your body started hemorrhaging and blood came out of your sweat pores? Then, you've had it easier than Christ. But why did He do that as an example to us that if He overcame it, He lives in us, He can overcome it for us if we allow Him. But increase means rejecting what God wants me to do and now I'm on my own. And when I'm on my own, I can come up with some scary stuff, Brother Donald. The heart's deceitfully wicked. No man can know it. I don't even know what I'm capable of doing outside the grace of God. But why do some people chase after certain things? Why do they pervert God's presence in their life? Why do they hear and it goes one in year and out the other? Why does that happen? Well, it's pretty simple. They just decided what I want is more important than what God wants. You know why politicians every four years become religious? Because they think that's what voters want to hear. And they'll fact check every word that comes out of Trump's mouth, even if it's a joke or a sarcastic comment. But how many people are following politicians around and saying, well, hey, they, they only go to church when the cameras are around. You know why people don't do that? Because most of the people that claim to be Christians that voted for them don't go to church even if cameras are around. When did people stop caring? When it became inconvenient in their eyes to serve God. When they wanted storefuls, when God said, there may just be a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil, but it'll last you. Every time you go to it, there's going to be more in it. But by faith, you've got to keep reaching down in there when you know you took every last drop out of it last time. But by faith, man of God said it wouldn't run out. And I believe that that man knew God. God's going to make sure there's oil in there. 
God's going to make sure that there's... Last time you scraped it out of all the crevices in the bottom of that basket to get enough to make another cake. But when you go back, there's more flour in there. How'd that happen? You did what God did. Not for the blessing, not for the bounty, not for the increase, but because you were just doing what thus saith the Lord because you love the Lord. Right? Put a price on peace, joy, love. Put a price on being able, whenever you need to, which for us about every second of every day, but knowing that when your knees hit the carpet, your prayers enter directly into the throne room of God. There's a lot of people that pray and they don't know who they're praying to or where it's going. There's a lot of saved folks that if you were to ask them, are you confident in your prayer and your ability to reach heaven? I wonder how many would say, yep. I know that when I pray, God hears it. Because they know that there's nothing between them and God. There's no iniquity to keep their prayers from reaching the throne room of God. What price do you put on that? Every time Jesus walked and he said, Father, Father heard. Father answered. Sent angels to minister unto him. Sent messengers by his way with a little word from the Father in heaven. Right? Why did that happen? Because Jesus, when he spoke, the Father listened. Well, I'm robed in his rights. We heard about it all during our last revival. If everything's in line in my life, when I speak, God hears. I don't care who's in the Oval Office. Don't care if I call and they pick up. Don't care how high up the pecking chain I am at work to where if I call the guy that's in charge, if he'll listen to what I have to say or whether he'll tell me to shut up and go back to work, that that's outside of my job description. Well, I know the one that's higher than any of them, as verse number 8 said. And when he inclines his ear towards me, there's no value you put on that. Why have people sought after silver? abundance why because they stopped valuing the blessings of God they stopped seeing the value in knowing the one that is the one that's what Jehovah means the one that lives because all the other ones are dead never were alive to begin with right then we get down to verse number 12, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. The more you got, the more you got to worry about. The more God gives you, the more responsibility there is. That's why y'all ought to pray for your pastor daily because you don't know the weight, the responsibility, the pressure that just comes with God giving you the responsibility of taking care of some of his sheep. That it's his job to watch for our souls. Talk about a load. Some of us can't even handle the responsibility of, you know, maybe watching for the souls of those that are under our care. Watching for the souls that God has put a burden on our heart that we'd pray for them. But instead of lifting them up, we get busy. We forget. You know how rare it is? that a man of God actually does what the Word of God says he's supposed to do nowadays? Because instead of pleasing God, they're more worried about pleasing man. And then, like we were talking about keeping up with the Jones, down south, it's a competition. Somebody gets angry at you, they know there's 12 more churches on the same road, they'll get up and go to a different one. But, well, because the pastor didn't make it to you know, the hospital when my daughter had her 19th kid. Well, maybe he was at the hospital, but just visiting somebody on their deathbed, trying to witness to them, see if God would give them one more opportunity to get saved. But, oh, I heard the pastor down the road. I heard that he, he does always show up at the hospital. Well, if you expect the preacher to be everywhere except studying the Word of God, how do you expect him to feed you on Sunday? Now, a man of God that loves you, he won't do those things to keep up with the guy down the street. He'll do it because he loves you. And if it's in his ability to get there, he'll be there. He'll load up a bus of people and go down to the middle of nowhere in Kentucky just to be a support to somebody that lost their mother and has had a funeral. 
Not because he had to, because he loves. Because he watches for you, so he wants to be the encouragement. Right? But a lot of people say, well, I'd love to have that job in the church. Dad had to tell Brother Ray, stop mowing the grass 19 times a week. Because Brother Ray retired and he came out here and mowed the grass about two times a week. Dad said, you keep cutting it that short, it's going to die. Right? But I mean, for every week, he's, out, he's climbing around somewhere, he's fixing something, he's doing something. Why? Because he's, getting, he's got a role and he just wants to do it under God. He's out there measuring grass to see, well, it's too long, we got to cut it. Right? He's like the guys at golf courses. Ah, uh, you can't putt on that. We got we got got to take the lines just quite you know aren't right. And then Brother Randy comes out of here to finish the motor. They argue like they're married, right? Why? Because they take the responsibility so serious. Because whether you realize it or not, first thing somebody sees when they pull in is the yard in the front of the church. Right there are those that clean the church that take it very seriously, because the first thing somebody sees when they walk in that church logo out there in the carpet and if it's got stains on it if it looks like it's been trodden over and it's got holes in it and everything well if that's what they think of their own church logo, what do they think about God our logo is the word of God if we don't care about that how do we care about God now you say well that doesn't have anything to do it. I know that but that's how the carnal world thinks because they build great golden temples the dead family members. That's what the Taj Mahal is. It was meant to be a tomb. What are the pyramids? They built something fancy for somebody that was going to die. Then they buried him in it. Right? Well, if you really love God, you'd give him your best. Yeah, that's what God expects. And even lost people know that we should give our best to God. So why don't we? Because we don't see any benefit. We don't see any reward. And we want the silver. We want the spoils. We want everything. And why do we pervert judge? Because I can get more silver if I just ease up on this. Well, more people would be on my side if I just let go of that standard. If I'd ease up on that doctrine. Right? If I'd give in to modern popular thinking. And I don't know why I just thought of this, but we'll say this and we'll be done. I pray for anybody that's teachers. Because you know who always has the pressure to change first? Those that are influencing the minds of others. Teachers have to deal with accepting things decades before it get, becomes popular in society because who do you think has been teaching them that for 20 years for them to get old enough and dumb enough to start a Facebook account or something and put their face out there with all their views on About all their opinions. Right? You know who socialists and communists always pressure into changing first after they take over the teachers because if you can teach somebody to think independently then you don't have them so you got to take over the teachers first but when people stop speaking truth to power that's when somebody can come in and do whatever they want to because they know they're not going to be ridiculed for it well you know who speaks truth to the power of the flesh God you know who speaks truth to your heart that will give you peace and comfort and joy in those hard moments in your life? God. You know what silver does? It tarnishes. It starts getting all green and coppery looking. You know what abundance does? It either rots or it goes in your stomach. And either way, I'm getting a whole lot bigger or there was no sense in having it in the first place. And then if I get a whole lot bigger, I could go out and work more to get new clothes that actually fit. Y'all may not believe me. I got a couple of suits. I'm going to see if Christian ones because guess what? I don't fit in them no more. Right? Blessed. But I had to go out and get new suits. And the more we have, the more that we have has us. And the more that we get, the more we realize that there's more... Con you got a boat, you got to keep that boat working. You got a car, you got to make sure that all the parts are working right. You got to make sure that you change the oil. Right? You get a fancy new riding lawnmower. Well, that's another engine that you got to take care of. Right? Yeah, well, I don't have to push the thing no more. No, but if, like our pastor, you leave the key into the headlights on position, battery's going to be dead next time you go do it. Brother Ray's going to have to come over and help you jump the battery. 
right? What more responsibility? And what does responsibility do? Pulls us out of the things of God because now we're so focused on keeping what we got that we've invested so much into that we're willing to let up on the one that holds our very breath in his hand. Why man cannot serve two masters? You'll either desire what God can give you or you'll go out chasing everything and sell God out for a whole lot less than 30 pieces of silver like Judas did. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.